colony, we've been talking a lot about colonies for a while here, so let's be clear what a colony is. A colony is an area of land that is owned by another country. It's claimed, it's owned in some way by another country. So we're going to be clear on how country is different from a colony. Uh, certainly they're both areas of land, uh, certainly people live there, that's true about both of them, they're both um, areas of land where people live, but a country is independent, uh, has an independent government, uh, independent in frankly lots of ways, so if you think of its government is independent, uh, its economy, Lots of things about a country are independent. The colony depends on the country for many things. That's really part of the definition of a colony. So it depends on what's called the mother country. That's the phrase that was often used back when there were many more, more colonies. Uh, depends on the mother colony for things like an army, a colony doesn't have its own army, for example, and also for most, or at least we could say many, different kinds of goods, different kinds of things. Another thing about a colony is it's producing, it's giving something back to the country. There are reasons for the country to have something that's depending on it. Uh, and for the colonies we'll be studying can only trade and really make any kinds of deals with um, really only connect with that mother country so it can only do trade with that other country um, just in general ways can only deal make any kind of deals with the country that owns it that mother country so that's a key fact about any kind of colony. So it's dependent, it's owned by that other country, that country is independent, the colony is not. The next term is subsistence farming. This is the kind of farming that was done a lot uh, in New England and some other places, but in the area we now live, for example, uh, we'll be thinking it's more of a thought bubble, really. Subsistence farming is a certain kind of farming that really only produces enough for a family. Uh, this is the kind of farming that doesn't make a lot of money. So if a family is living on a farm, it's only producing enough for the family. We could think plus maybe a little more to be able to sell, maybe a little bit more, but the point of this kind of farm is just to be able to feed the people, give them enough milk, eggs, and so on. The, this is different from cash crop kind of farming. Cash crop, I'm not going to put anything in the middle because it's obvious are both about farming. Cash crop farming produces, in fact, often it's the kind of crops not for eating. Not all cash crops are this way, but many of the kinds of crops are not for eating. These would be things like tobacco is a common one. Um, there are also some things grown for uh, Dyeing clothes, D-Y-E, so to give color for clothing, that can come from some crops. So cash crop farming, again, for one thing, it's often crops not for eating. Also, cash crop farming is producing enough to be able to, to sell much, or maybe even most, of the crops that are grown. So, 
the point of this kind of farming is really about growing things to be able to sell. Subsistence farming is just producing enough for the family. And really it tends to depend on the kind of climate for where the person's living. Some places produce enough for cash crops, especially the farther south usually that you go. And the farther north you go, it's usually more subsistence farming, just barely able to produce enough with the kind of growing seasons that you have. Mercantilism is an economic system. It's a system of having a very specific kind of economy. In this kind of economic system, countries limit trade. They put limits on who and how they're going to trade. So who they trade with and how is very carefully done. In these days we have more free trade. So this would be in today's world, in the 2000s, you could be thinking of free trade. Mercantilism was very much more popular in the 1700s, so that's one important difference. In free trade, countries are not putting such limits on trade. Okay, I'll come back to the key. In free trade, there are not the limits that you have in mercantilism. And in free trade, all uh, countries are using cash. All, all the people in the system can be using some kind of cash system to be getting trade done. In mercantilism, it's a bit different. That's one of the limits that's happening. So one key piece is that for this to work, you need to have colonies. A country really needs to have colonies to make this work. Free trade works in our system, of course, without colonies. So, if you want to try living life in the 1700s, here's how to do mercantilism. First, you need to get a colony that has some good resources in it. Next, you're going to need to send people who will settle there. They are going to be your customers. Then, you force those settlers to send you some of their resources. When they send you those resources, whatever grows or lives or whatever in that colony, you trade them stuff. You trade them stuff back, not money. Because the point is to get money. You trade them stuff, things they can't make themselves, things they can't grow themselves. That's how you're going to get their resources. But you keep your money. Now you can use those resources. The best thing is you can sell them or make them into something that you can sell for money. That's how you make money. Maybe you can eat it. Maybe you can do something else with those resources. That's how you get to keep the money. So you need colonies for this kind of system. You're limiting the trade by forcing them to send you the stuff. And now you get to keep as much money as possible. That's mercantilism. This is another word we don't really use anymore, barter, B-A-R-T-E-R. -E and when you barter, it's a form of trade. It's a kind of, it's a way to trade with someone else. Putting that over there for a reason. But this is the kind you only really do between, uh, just between people, not with another country. So this doesn't work like mercantilism or some other things that you may have heard of. So this is something you do between yourself and another person or a group of people. And when you barter, it's not quite like when you have some kind of a cash system for trade. Uh, this is the kind that we know, which is another way to trade. And okay, so I'll take the bus and bus to the front, please. I'll take the bus and bus to the front, please. 
when you have a cash system, you need, this needs money of some kind, even if it's like a credit card. But when you barter, it's not with money. When you're bartering, it's between things, things of what you decide are similar kind of value. So, or, you could actually, well, actually we could put it this way, that could mean doing work for someone else instead of trading a thing, like a physical thing, it could be doing work for somebody else, or it could be some kind of physical objects that you're trading between one person and another. In a cash system, the value is based on whatever money system we have. Things have a value of one dollar, ten dollars, hundred dollars. The similar value has to be agreed by whoever is trading. So, if both people involved agree this is a fair trade, if they agree on it, that's fine. Salutary neglect, that's the term we give for the policy that England had toward the colonies in the 1700s. So, that was the term for England's attitude until exactly the year 1763. Things change in 1763, and before 1690 there were some different attitudes as well. But for that long period of time, salutary neglect is how England treated the colonies. Salutary meaning friendly, like respectful, like if you saluted somebody. Neglect means leaving someone alone. So when you put these together, you get someone in a friendly and respectful way, leaving someone alone. England's attitude was friendly, respectful, and leaving those colonies basically on their own for that range of time. So it looks like having weak rules about trade. They were not really good at mercantilism. They were not really forcing the settlers to do what they would need to do to give England lots of money. They were not doing this well. So some uh, trade with other countries did end up happening, which means England lost out on some money that it could have otherwise received. So they allowed some trade with other countries between colonists and other countries, like Massachusetts, uh, folks in Massachusetts, Massachusetts fishermen would sell fish to maybe someone in uh, another colony perhaps, a, a farther away colony, or they might have ended up selling them to maybe someone in France. And then France is getting that money, or the fishermen are getting the money from France instead of England getting that kind of money. So there were very few laws coming from England, so they could mostly run their own government. Some laws, some check-ins from time to time, but until 1763, salutary neglect for trade and government is how England ran things for the colonies. We need to know the difference between Protestant and Catholics, and I'm going to be very careful to be respectful to members of both of these religions. They're both forms of Christianity. So if you are Protestant or Catholic, you're still a Christian. So you still, in some way at least, follow uh, the same book, the Bible. And both Catholics and Protestants uh, honor, respect uh, Jesus. The Jesus story is very important to both, so that belongs in the middle. So again, they're Christian, 
uh, Christ is important to both Protestants and Catholics. Also, you should know there are different types of each, different kinds of Catholics, and there are different kinds of Protestants. I'll try to generalize by putting them all kind of together on the outside. One important difference is Catholics, uh, the Catholic faith believes there's no need for individuals to read the Bible. You don't need to read the Bible. Church leaders, like the Pope, will explain all that you need to know. Protestants, and their name Protestant, protest comes from their disagreement with the Catholics. One key thing they protested is, a long time ago, they believe believers must read and understand the Bible for themselves, not having a church leader tell them what the Bible really means. Another important difference is about ideas of hell. Catholics tend to believe you must do some good deeds here on earth to stay out of going to hell in the afterlife. And that's why confession, confessing your sins is important, confessing to church leaders 